Hi there. In this presentation, we'll be discussing proning, which is under Module 2, Unit 3, Topic 4. Our objectives are to understand why we prone patients. In other words, how does proning help treat respiratory conditions? We will look at types of pathologies that benefit from proning, contraindications, the procedure itself, and potential complications. Prone positioning is used to optimize oxygenation in patients with acute lung injury or acute respiratory distress syndrome. This diagram illustrates the perfusion and ventilation of a patient with ALI or ARDS in the supine position. As you can see, because consolidation in lung tissue is patchy and gravity dependent, the base of the lung typically has decreased ventilation from fluid and accumulation and atelectasis. Perfusion is gravity dependent and therefore there is greater at the base than at the apex. Spine positioning matches gravity dependent perfusion with gravity dependent consol consolidation, creating severe ventilation perfusion or VQ mismatch. When the patient is placed in the prone position, the apex of the lungs, which typically has less consolidation and atelectasis, is now in a position to receive more perfusion, effectively matching the ventilation to perfusion and reducing the shunt. This position also is also advantageous as it allows for recruitment of collapsed alveolar units, mobilization of secretions, and improved functional reserve capacity. Proning may be indicated for any respiratory pathology that causes significant VQ mismatch. The most common pathologies are ALI and ARDS. Other potential, if not less likely pathologies that would require proning are cardiogenic pulmonary edema, pneumonia, and pulmonary embolus. Contraindications to placing a patient in the prone position are mostly related to the potential for complications related to the position the patient is placed in and the potential for dislodgement of tubes. The contraindications are also generally relative as we become more comfortable with the proning procedure and many of the negative sequelae have been mitigated. For example, an article in the Intensive and Critical Care Nursing Journal in October of 2018 reviewed the safety of proning patients with venovenous ECMO and found that it was a safe and reliable technique um, when performed in a recognized ECMO center with the appropriately trained staff and standard procedures. In all in all cases, the risk-benefit to the patient must be considered, and if proning is deemed to be beneficial, any potential risks should be managed safely. So some of the potential contra contraindications include acute bleeding, spinal instability, pregnancy in the third trimester, an unstable intracranial pressure, an unstable sternum, the requirement of a ventricular assist device or an intra-aortic balloon pump, um, extracorporeal life support or ECMO, multiple trauma, the requirement for CRRT or continuous replacement, renal replacement therapy. Uh, the patient has a uh, temporary pacemaker or is hemodynamically unstable. Um, the patient is obese, has gross ascites, uh, has an anterior chest tube, has an open abdominal wound or an open chest. To see a video on one method for proning a patient, please see the link to the video and review the following journal article. It is also important to familiarize yourself with your institution's policy and procedures regarding proning if you are working in an area where this is done. Procedures checklists and competency training have all helped to improve the skill with which patients are turned and the care of the patient while proned. Despite this, proning can have significant complications. Anticipating these complications can improve outcomes. ETT tubes, uh, central lines, um, 
chest tubes, ECMO, and CRT lines can all potentially be dislodged during turning, which is why those performing the proning procedure need to be skilled and work as a team. Typically, the respiratory therapist will protect the airway, while the primary nurse protects central lines and chest tubes. Proning is meant to improve the VQ mismatch, however, not all patients respond the same, and in some case, in cases, the patient may show worsening gas exchange. These patients often already have underlying hemodynamic instability, which may be profound when placed in the prone position. For this reason, as well as the negative changes in gas exchange, the entire proning team with a physician stay at the bedside after the patient has been prone for the first time to see how well they tolerate it. Other complications are related to the limited mobility and position of the patient. Eye damage um, is a potential because the patient is placed um, on their face and placing a sea foam, uh, sea foam or gel ring under the head to ensure the eye is supported free of the bed surface as well as lubricating the eyes um, every two hours um, can help with, uh, with mitigating that issue. Skin breakdown also is a very um, relevant issue. Q2 positioning of all the arms, legs and head uh, as well as good skin care are also required. Venous congestion of the head and neck, um, in this case a reverse Trendelenburg position as well as Q2 head turns can help with that. Nerve compression, so this is typically related to the positioning of the arms. Um, we position the arms in what's called termed a swimmer's position um, and this helps uh, uh, to, to remove that pressure on the nerve area. Um, and that's done Q2 as well. We also uh, typically will get um, physiotherapy and occupational therapy to consult to make sure that the positioning is optimal. And then finally contractures again related to that positioning um, and uh, PT often will come and do what's called passive range of motion as well as our continued Q2 positioning. So these are the typical complications. Um, it's not an exhaustive list but this is the most significant ones that we typically see. This concludes our presentation on proning. Um, if you have any questions on any of the material covered in this presentation, please contact your instructor. Thank you.